So here we have a test sculpture that I've made in using DynaMesh with various different subtools. And as you can see, it's all part of one mesh. It's quite dense um, and it's not suitable for rendering in a DCC app like Blender, Maya, Max, etc. So what we're going to do is take each of these, split them off into various different subtools, and then with each subtool, create subdivision levels for each of them. So I've already done that over here. So you can see now that we have a subtool here, one for each of the various subtools here. Uh, everything from his eyes to his head, his entire head. And each of them also has subdivision levels. So from here, you can see we have down to subdivision level one on that. I've already done another tutorial on taking a high-res Dynamesh object and creating subdivision levels. That's the Skexis tutorial, which I'll link to in the description. So from here, we're ready to export this into Blender. So the way we do that is to go to our Z plugin and then multi-map exporter over here. I'm going to export the displacement and the mesh today. You could also export ambient occlusion maps. Um, if you had poly painted this, you could export the texture. But just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to do these two things here. So export mesh is going to go and export whatever is the currently selected subtool. But we want all of our subtools selected. So I'm going to turn on subtools here and that will export all of them. We're going to choose 4K as our map size. And because this is ZBrush, we have to flip the, all the maps vertically. Um, when we go down to um, actually choosing this, this is the displacement here, but now we have to actually say, well, what are the settings for that displacement? So you'll see that there's a vector displacement, a normal vector displacement, normal. These are basically the settings for whatever option that you turn on or off here. So because we've turned on displacement, we know need to go down to the displacement map to see, well, what are these settings for this displacement? So the first thing it's going to ask us is which subdivision level do we want to displace from? Um, we could choose any. We could say well, we wanted to, uh, to take it from displacement from subdivision level three, which would be here. Um, and if we were going to export a mesh with 234,000 points, that would be fine. But we don't want to do that. We want to export the lowest possible, which is 14,000 points. So I'm going to make sure that this is down to subdivision level one and export from there. We do need to uh, ignore adaptive and the sub pixel. They're basically supposed to give you better quality, but tend not to. Um, smooth UVs, we leave turned on. Three channels, 32 bit EXR, turn them all on. Ignore scale, ignore intensity, and we're good to go. So now all we need to do is make sure that we also have export mesh turned on, and that will export each of these sub tools at this subdivision level here, which is. So now when I hit create all maps, we just browse to a folder that we'd like to put this into, hit save, and ZBrush will go through and export each of the meshes plus, plus the displacement maps that it generates for us. And we're done. As you can see here, the maps it's created and the meshes are here. So that's each of these objects correspond to the subtools that we had here. And then we're also in a position, um, we might as well, uh, if we sort by type here, we can basically just delete the material files because we don't need them um, in Blender. So we just now have OBJs and corresponding uh, DXR files for each of them. You will notice that some of them, for example, the eyes here, there's an OBJ, but there isn't an EXR. Uh, and if we go to our mesh here, you'll see on our eyes, that's because we don't have any subdivisions on this. So basically it didn't generate a map if there wasn't any subdivisions. Once you've got all your settings set and you know you're gonna to wanna to use them again, use the load save presets and save these presets and put them in a folder where you know you're gonna find them again. One thing that I find useful is in the Pixelogic folder where I have all of my ZBrush installs is I actually create a presets folder in there. And that way, anytime a new version of ZBrush comes in, I can just, I know that I'll, I won't have to go digging around for presets. I know that I've stored them here in the base folder. So we call this one displacement multimap export or blender.zme. And that will save these so the next time you just have to load them up um, if you do change them for Maya or for any other app and you need to get back to your Blender settings. So from here, we're ready to go into Blender. So I'm gonna copy this path and then we go into Blender, select our default cube, which is there on our default and delete that. We go to File, Import, OBJ, browse to the folder where we have our files, 
and start importing them. Now I have to do this one by one. I believe there is a way to get multiple files. Blender, you'll notice if you select them all, uh, holding down shift and then hit import OBJ, will just take in the first selection. So uh, unfortunately I have to do this one by one. If somebody has a script to do this in, in one go, please do let me know. I, I'll be very interested in getting it. So now that we have everything imported in, we're ready to start going. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a collection, new collection. Uh, we call that Geo. Wait, double clicking on it, and we select all of our stuff in here except for the camera and the light, and we just left click drag that in here. So with with all of these selected, we can press G and Z and just bring that up above the ground plane here, um, and we're just going to select everything, right click and shade smooth to smooth the normals. And then from there, uh, get ready to start applying the actual displacement. So before we actually apply any displacement, we need to have subdivisions on it. So I'm going to select everything again and press Control 2. That will add a new modifier to each of these objects. So if we go into the modifier stack here for each of these, you can see they all share the same modifier with two divisions set in the viewport. Two should be more than enough, but five is what we're going to need at render time because that's the amount of subdivisions we had in ZBrush. So we need to take them in turn. I'm going to go from the head first uh, and we need to add, in order to displace this, we need to add the displacement maps that we generated in ZBrush. So we go down to the deform and add a displace modifier. Um, it's going to balloon up because it hasn't actually got a texture associated with it yet. So we need to say a new texture and that texture is going to use UVs. So once we've done that, we go down to the texture and, and specify which texture by hitting open and then browsing to the location where we saved all of this and the head is here. So you can see immediately in the viewport that that's looking quite good here. And um, if we zoom in a little bit and we go back up to our stack up here, you can see that if we had increased our viewport to three or four, you'll see that much more detail in your viewport, but this is obviously a little bit heavy um, um, on your viewport. So two is more than enough to know that it's working. But again, at render time, you're gonna want this to be set to five. So now we just need to go through every other object in here. So say the horns, for example, we'll apply a displace to that as well. New texture, make sure it's set to UVs, go down to the texture, hit file open, browse to the location, and this is the horns. So we select the horns texture and we'll work our way through everything here. So lower gums, for example, has the same thing. Displace, new, UV, Texture, open, um, lower gums, uh, the front teeth. There are some objects that didn't need displacement, such as the rings here and the eyes. Um, so they're not going to need anything here. But from here, if you hit render, you're going to get a result. I'm just going to set up some lights very quickly so we can actually see what that might look like. So here we are after having applied some lights and adjusting the shaders a little bit. And um, all I did was basically go into here and start playing around with some of these settings uh, and they all share the same shader. So the, the specular, the subsurface, all that kind of stuff. But basically the final look looks something like this. So as you can see, the displacement has shown up nicely and this is very comparable to our ZBrush that we saw earlier on. Hope this helps and as usual if you have any suggestions for other tutorials please do let me know and please do consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Cheers, bye.